In this video, Jordan Peterson talks about the conscientiousness people. So what we've been trying to figure out what makes conscientious people motivated. Because conscientiousness predicts life success. It's like, well, are they interested in what they're doing? No. It's dutifulness. Okay, so why is that a motivator? We're thinking that what the conscientious person wants is not to slide into the disgusting bottom of things. So imagine the hierarchy. Okay? Top is pure, bottom is contaminated. Why? Well, I can tell you one reason. If you take a given geographical locale, this is even true for songbirds, and you rank order the denizens of that locale by their dominance position, and then you let a pathogen in, the animals die from the bottom up. Right. So the bottom of the dominance hierarchy is where all the pathogens hang out. And so if that's disgusting and it's morally impure and you're bad if you're down there, which is really a conservative viewpoint in many ways, it's your fault you're there, right? And I'm not going to be there no matter what. And so I think what the conscientious person is doing is fleeing the bottom. They're not trying to get to the top. Except that that's the farthest away you can get from the bottom And that's a purity motivation Now, we don't know that yet because we haven't been able to figure out how to motivate industrious people in the lab So, which is weird, right? Because conscientiousness predicts life success You'd think that you could find a task in the lab that conscientious people would do better than non-conscientious people We've tried dozens of things and not been able to do it So now, we're, we're trying to make people embarrassed and ashamed and see if we can get them to like donate more to a charity if we do that based on the idea that what's motivating the conscientious person is a flight from contamination it could easily be so it's quite mind boggling like it was a twist it was a twist i i'd never i never forecast in my conceptualization of these things but the underworld you know it's a place of chaos and fear but the underworld that's hell it's full of sulfurous odors you know it's 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 not only terrifying it's also disgusting and it's associated symbolically with disgusting elements of the body as well. So, and purity, obviously, sexual purity, for example, is certainly a hygiene purity admixture. And it's 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 flight from contamination. And no wonder, right? I mean, there are sexually transmitted diseases. It's like a major vector of disease transmission. We saw that with the AIDS outbreak. You know, without without uh Airplanes, there wouldn't have been any AIDS outbreak. You know, jet planes plus promiscuity, it's like bang, you know, we almost generated a virus that took down the whole planet. So it's no joke when these things escape from their, from their little box. You know, you might say, well, why aren't people allowed to have the sexual life they want? Well, the disease, the, ve the relationship between disease transmission and promiscuity is exponential. That's why. So, you know, you might think, well, that's no reason. It's like, okay, maybe not. But, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of people have died from AIDS, but it's lots. In fact, that's a primary problem of men distinguishing ISIS, so that's the feminine underworld, from evil. Right. Right, the, because, because there, there's a negative element to both of them If you haven't differentiated properly Then the woman can carry that whole load That happened to some degree with Eve, for example, in the, in the, in the Genesis story It's so interesting, because if you read Genesis, we're going to talk about that later the, the person who looks really bad in Genesis isn't Eve The person who looks really bad is Adam you know, So Eve offers him the apple, and like a dunce, he takes it But then... God comes along afterwards, he's all self-conscious now, and so is Eve And so God comes along to have a little walk with Adam like he's used to doing And Adam is hiding in the bushes because he's naked and he doesn't want God to see And so God calls him on it and says like Hey buddy, I can see through bushes, you know Come out here where I can talk to you And Adam says, oh I'm naked, I can't come out And God says, how do you figure that out? And Adam, being the heroic creature that he was, said you know that woman you made for me? It's her fault! It's like, well, who's the villain in that story? He's such a weasel that when he gets called on his disobedience, the first thing he does is blame the woman. It's like, yeah, yeah, well, that's an archetypal story, I'll tell you that. You know, so, the temptations of Eve, you know, it's like the rapists who blame the attractiveness of the woman for the rape. 
It's like the devil made me do it, you know. So, anyways, it's very difficult to distinguish one form of negative from another. And partly what we're going to do when we go through the symbolic differentiation process is put things in their proper place. So I would say, that's this. There. So, for me, that's the map of the symbolic sphere. Okay, so what you have in the very background is the dragon of chaos. That's the absolute unknown, as such. So you can think about it as the chaos from which everything else emerges. So that's the unknown unknowns. Okay. On top of that, there's a feminine layer. And that's the Great Mother. And the Great Mother has a positive aspect. She's mother of all things. And she has a negative aspect. And she's, she's the angry Tiamat, the force of death that pulls all biological creatures back into her grasp. Creation and destruction. So on top of that, there's culture. And culture protects you from the Great Mother, just like with Osiris, you, Isis stays in the underworld where she belongs. But culture has a negative element and a positive element. So it's, it's patriarchal, it's represented by masculine figures, but it has an element that offers order and an element that offers tyranny. And there's always a balance between those two. And so, if you're a conservative, you think, hooray, order, and if you're a lefty, you think, oh no, tyranny. And you're both right, right? Because every organization tends towards tyranny and supports you at the same time, so it's, it's right. On top of that, there's the archetypal individual. That's also represented in masculine form for reasons that we'll get into later. But it has a positive and a negative too. And the positive is the creative explorer moving out into the darkness with eyes open. And then there's the counterpart of that. Which is the thing you shake hands with when you're Romeo Dallaire and you shake hands with the devil. And that's the individual too. And one of the things I would, you can think about this, but one of the things that I really like about this map is that I think it's the antidote for ideology. And the reason for that is that you can map ideologies onto this map, but the ideologies only give you half the story. So like the left-wing story would be lovely, virginal mother nature being tyrannized by the evil corporations as civilization advances, led by the adversarial individual. But the right-wing story is the heroic individual bringing order into chaos to avoid the destructive element of, of the natural world. So that's like the frontier myth that, 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 uh, that settled the United States, right? Heroic pioneers moving civilization into the chaotic unknown. You can just slam those two together. And then you got the real problem, which is that nature slash the unknown is a creative source of everything and it will pull you into pieces if, if it has the opportunity. And then culture, it's like, you can talk and it's warm. You better be happy with culture. But the probability that it's going to take you and crunch you and try to turn you into a cog is like, yeah, that's what it's going to do. That's what it does. And then there's you. Well, yeah, you're wonderful, interesting, you know, great creature, but look the hell out. So, and that's right. That, and I think the archetypal stories do a lovely job of, of continually bringing those elements together.